The BBC, as part of Black History Month, has a number of figures on its website. Some of them are very interesting figures, some of them I know already. This one I was vaguely aware of, Fanny Eaton, for a pre-Raphaelite model, mainly because I have an interest in pre-Raphaelite art. However, here's where the BBC, in attempting to draw attention to her, a forgotten figure who's of interest, oversells the things. It gives you some brief biographical details of Fanny Eaton's life first, such as Fanny Eaton knew and whistle 23rd of June 1835 to 4th of March 1924, which is quite a long lifespan in the era she was born in, was an artist model of mixed heritage, Jamaica British, who modelled for several pre Raphaelite artists and at the Royal Academy School of Painting. No problem with this so far. She pops up in numerous paintings from the pre Raphaelite era. But then it ends by going, Fanny Eaton was the first British supermodel of mixed heritage. She wasn't a supermodel. She wasn't Naomi Campbell. That makes her, in fact, this does the woman a disservice as she it was acting as an artist model to feed her kids in a, in a harsh world where there was very little recourse to public funds. And it supplemented the wages of her husband who is a cab driver. She's an interesting figure, but you don't need to sell her as a supermodel to get the interest going. In a moment, I'm going to show you some of the paintings she's in so you can get an idea of what she looked like. Fanny Eaton was linked to a, a number of artists. In particular, she was linked to the Solomon family, who are a, a Jewish family of pro, who, who produced a number of prominent artists, including Simone Solomon here, seen here, whose career was eventually wrecked for, due to him being prosecuted and imprisoned for homosexual activity several times. This effectively killed his career, and for a, the last part of his artistic life, he only produced art pri privately, and at one point was confined to the workhouse as an alcoholic. Here you can see um, and a typical example of his sister, Rebecca Solomon, where Fanny appears with children. She's used often in mother settings with, as a mother, which, considering that the real woman had 10 children, is not surprising that she would have been a natural with children. This is a, a study by the Victorian artist Sandys, which is now held by the British Museum. This is Dante Gabriel Rossetti's unmistakable hand. To it. It's particularly a heavy shading and the fact that all these women tend to look very heavy jowled attractive but in a particularly heavy earthy way again sandys and a side study and again this is Rebecca, Rebecca solomon's work just as a example of it on her own she seems to be in quite an um an emotional paint, uh, but I wouldn't go so far as to call her quiche because there's underlying sarcasm in some of her other paintings I looked at, which can be quite cutting. This is a painting where there's some debate about whether Eaton is a model for one of the women in this. It's a, it's been open for debate. It's supposed to be... I don't think I need to explain that it's a lesbian setting. And this is um, Fanny Eaton as a mother of Moses. I particularly liked this painting and thought it was very effective. I wasn't particularly aware of Simon Solomon's art as much as Rossetti's, but this painting was apparently, not surprisingly, quite cons cons controversial in the Victorian era with people moaning about the dark skins of Moses' mum, because, of course, as Moses' mum was probably a, a blonde Teutonic goddess, as opposed to a woman with dark Mediterranean skin. Again, we have a facial study, particularly effective study, I thought. And again, this one is Fanny as a slave. There's some debate whether this is meant to be her. I would say yes, judging by how she's looked in other paintings. But it's, a, again, a debate between art historians who love to beat themselves up about this sort of stuff. As you can see, the amount of art she worked with include major names from the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. And she appears in quite a lot of paintings. She seems to have appeared in works over a, a range of about six to seven years. And to be in her accounts books 
for various institutes show that she was paid in reasonable amounts. They wouldn't have been fantastic, though. She wasn't a supermodel. They would have been equivalent to, um, all told, if you allow for inflation, somewhere in the region of six to ten thousand pounds. That's not exactly supermodel territory. I'm going to end with another site in a minute where someone ha has done her as a doll, amusingly. This particular site's chosen to do a soft sculpted version of um, Van Eaton and to show her in poses against particular paintings, inclu um, including sort of Henry Tr Truffrey Dumb here, and to give her a, a little bit more background. It's also outlined some of the paintings I've just been through. It has another few that um, I haven't. This particular portrait of Fanny by Simeon Solomon is copyright and please do not go to sites and save copies because it's under copyright at the moment. You can show it, but that's a different matter. Um, it tells you a little bit more about her life as well. Age 22 in 1857, Fanny married James Eaton, 25, a horse cab owner and driver from Shoreditch. They eventually had 10 children together, six girls and four boys. Fanny Eaton's career as a model was short but intense, lasting for around 10 years. Some debate about this. I saw some sites that said more like six or seven, and some that agreed with this 10-year figure. I imagine it's, it's difficult to know. She, but at this point is something that I would say is not debatable. She modelled out of necessity to supplement her earnings when her employment as a charwoman was not enough to sustain her family of, of children. It shows you also, right down the bottom, her final resting place, which is Margravine Cemetery in Hammersmith and Fulham, where apparently there has been some moves to put up a headstone for her, but I couldn't find a picture of that, sadly. The BBC does not need to go be so fulsome in its descriptions. Fanny Eaton's life history is fascinating without trying to cast her as a supermodel of the era, which is a ridiculous comparison. It tries to retroactively glue something from now to then, which is bad history and a bad way to approach these kind of subjects. BBC's goal of trying to bring lesser-known figures from an ethnic community back to life is worthwhile, but someone really might want to have a word with them about the writing style they use. Although I'd say that's true of a lot of the BBC's writing style anymore, which has at times struck me as juvenile, to say the least. There's been a slow and steady derogation of it over the years. In any case, that's what, this is one figure from the past you might find interesting if you enjoy art.